Denise Marlowe. You are now listening to the Drunken Monks Podcast. Denise. Yo, Marlo. Good evening, sweetheart. What's going on? Good night. We are back. And the last time that we were in this place, at this time, shit got serious. <laughs> it seems that this place brings out the seriousness, man. What is that? What is that? Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Marlo Brown. Denise Fiber. And we are... The drunken monks. Drunken monks. Boy. Not in the monastery today. No, nah, but, uh, but although we are, we are close. We're so, close. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could call this the cloister. <laughs> All right. The monks in the cloister. <laughs> yeah. Doch. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, Bong, Simon, good evening, the whole nine. Um, we are recording on Tuesday, March 1st. Yes, two, baby. Two, A new month. Yeah. New month, uh, 2022. And uh, the reason that we are given the, the date line on this one is because the subject matter that we are talking about uh, both moved very quickly and is very serious enough that we need to know time and place and scale. So even if that people look back to us at how we talked about it, that at least we know that the context that we had was at that particular moment. Yeah, by the time you see it, the situation will be completely different. And, uh, probably escalated just a bit more, uh, definitely from what we heard. And uh, for those that are not uh, quite uh, catching what we're talking about... Yeah, the uh, the conflict in the Ukraine. And, um, Ukraine in the membrane. Oh, Lord. Ukraine in the brain. He was practicing that in the mirror for like about a half an hour, y'all. <laughs> like, like, I'm not even playing. It's clunk best good, man, but... Um, mm. But what happened was... Um, yeah, just the long and short of it. Like, you will give the, the facts of a timeline... Uh, we are both going to do our best to go try to give a little bit of context because we can't come off of the episode of last week. By the way, hey, Margo, how, how, are, how, how are you, sweetheart? Um, but we're going to try to give context and nuance into what is going on. Uh, definitely like our opinions and definitely what it involves who cares here for us on an island that is about 8,000 miles away. So we're going to see how all that is going to work out. And uh, we would invite you to sit with us and then just have a, like, have a bit of a chat about this like, as well. Okay. Toch? Yes. Toch. Uh, would you like to start us off with um, okay, well, like I think, what the hell is going on at least? Like, <laughs> as I've gathered information, so of course it's not going to be complete. But wait, 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 before we start, what are we drinking? You know what we're drinking because you made it. <laughs> yes, inspired by Francesco, his whiskey sour. I yeah. tried to recreate the whiskey sour. There you go. Uh, only I put a little bit of ice, and the ice is melting. So yeah, next drink, less ice. Nah, but you see, but you're not a, but you're not a professional, so you so like you're allowed. Cheers, those with that, and uh, to peace. To peace. Hopefully. Yeah, man. So, yeah. Okay, so what happened? Wow. Um, February twenty fourth, um, Putin, the president of um, the Russia Russian Federation, is what it's called. Yes. Huh? Uh, declared war basically on Ukraine. Um, he sent a message that he was going to invade the Ukraine. Only he called it um, it was a special military operation. Yeah. And his reasoning, let's call it that, his his excuse was that um, there are two parts in in Ukraine that are are pro Russian and that are are yeah. There's a lot of uh, Russian supporters and Russian speakers. Um, he declared those. Uh, to places uh, independent and then said that he had to protect the Russians there. He, he recognized it. Like, oh, yeah, he he, yeah, no, yeah, he recognized it. They, they them. declared themselves independent. It was, yes, true. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. They declared themselves independent and then Russia recognized their yeah. independence. So, Very quickly, by the way, like the day of. like Exactly. And then, of course, those two places, uh, Donbass, is it, is it, is it Donbass it? and Luhansk or something? No, like yeah, that. no, they call it for Is it not combined? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's one combined, like, kind of a, like a provincia or something yeah. like that. And um, um, they. Uh, so, so Putin was saying that they needed protecting from uh, Ukrainians because human rights and all that kind of way. So, a special um, military operation was necessary. And he called it, he said it is to demilitarize and de Nazify. <laughs> The area. Yep. And, you know, he started to um, send missiles into Ukraine. And actually, he's trying to um, take over Ukraine. 
Um, now we're on day six of the invasion. Right. Um, the second bi- uh, second largest city in the Ukraine was um, bombarded. Right. And they're trying to go to Kiev. That's the capital. And I'm saying Kiev. A, lo- a lot of the times you hear Kiev. Yeah. But Kiev is the Russian pronunciation. And Kiev is the Ukrainian pronunciation. And um, yeah, I'm standing with the people of Ukraine. So I say Kiev. Um, but what has happened? Did the international community respond? Mm, uh, they were slow to respond. NATO is still sitting, thinking, not knowing what to do. Because, of course, Russia has a lot of oil, which a lot of the European countries are uh, oil, gas, which a lot of the European countries are dependent upon this. How are we going to tackle um, Russia? But eventually they put sanctions and very harsh um Economic, those financial Some sanctions. of the hardest that has ever been in modern times. Like yeah. Basically, cut their legs off all the way financially, and they're not looking at institutions or the country. No, they are targeting individuals. So all of Putin's friends, all like all of the so-called like oligarchs and whatnot. And so yeah. Well. So what has happened is they cut the SWIFT them from SWIFT. So international banking is um, not possible, right. and they um, blocked the Russian central bank. From um, getting to their four hundred billion dollars of um, foreign assets, basically money that is um, saved elsewhere, so the central bank in Russia cannot get to their money. Um, lots of countries now are on the sanction bandwagon, so um, which means that you cannot do business with Russia um, or with certain persons or with companies in Russia. So the net is getting tighter. The financial net in Russia is getting right. tighter. Um, Russia, on the other hand, uh, is still uh, bombing and 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 coming in with tanks and all kind of things in the Ukraine. Um, in Russia itself, they closed down two of the the two independent media outlets. So at this moment, there is only state propaganda yep. in Russia. Um, a lot of um, Ukrainians are fleeing the Ukraine. Um, Six hundred thousand by the last count. Yeah, 680,000, yeah. uh, the the United Nations said it's 680,000, so by now it's probably uh, over 700,000 by the time you watch it, it's, it's maybe close to a million. Um, at the moment, it was really difficult to find out how many casualties there are. The, the Ukrainian government said that there were 350-something um, civilians that yeah. were killed, of whom 14 children there are no numbers about um, the Ukrainian soldiers that have died. The U- Ukrainian president or the Ukrainian government says that about three thousand. Uh, no, let me not let me not talk nonsense. Um, about five thousand Russian troops were killed. Right. Um, but of course, we don't know that. There's no way to check the numbers. And at this always point. take those numbers with a grain of salt because. That too was a part of uh, propaganda in any war. So one side will say they had less loss and the other side had more loss. Yes. And that'll always be the way from time like immemorial. You know? And um, so women and children are fleeing. Men are staying behind to fight. And mm-hmm. at this moment, a lot of uh, people from outside the Ukraine are traveling to the Ukraine to help uh, to defend the Ukraine. So a sort of a Fremdeling Legion, like a... Uh, how you call it in English? Uh, 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 mercenaries army? No, no, no. no they, but uh, but just but just the fact that there's there are people that yeah maybe mercenary maybe mercenary might be the word like we don't know we are not military people folks and we had to f- to catch up on some things like real quick you know and but, then yeah um the world is slowly the world was a li- some countries were a little bit slow to condemn. Russian and they were speaking of you know you need to keep the peace not not saying um we're we're strongly opposed uh Russian invasion or whatever that's slowly yeah. changing and there have been peace talks uh between Ukraine and Russia um but the first one failed and Wednesday um March 2nd they're going to they're going to try to not going to try there's a second round of peace talks and yeah, we have to see what the outcome is going to be. Right. That is in a nutshell. Right. And what and, is happening. and again, um, even in the facts, not for it's just to be quick and to get it out the way because there's a lot of more details that are like tied into what's going on at this very moment. 
Um, but the long and short of it is, is that look, just bombs are flying, guns are flying, people are dying, and more could happen, and more shall probably happen. And what looks to be leaders trying to play games with the populace, and that's the long and short of it. And yeah. no matter how you want to turn it, because like China's playing games with us too. The States is playing gay games with us too. NATO, Europe has to play games with us because it's it literally involves them. Yeah. So whether you like it or not, like people have to play the game of international geopolitics and what that means. And that doesn't always mean that justice happens. That that doesn't all, like always mean that the right thing or or like the good guys win or whatnot. Yeah. That's that's not the world that we live in. We love those kind of movies. We love those kind of books. We love those kind of stories. But Reality is, is that not always the thing that needs to happen will happen and only a compromise, hopefully, among all parties in some way, shape or form where loss of life will be kind of minimal, where cola heads will prevail. Hopefully that'll be the thing, because that's the one thing, too, on top of this whole shit show that has made this even more co complicated. The fact of the matter is, is that there are two countries on the planet that can literally destroy humanity if they so wish. That would be the United States, and that would be Russia, with uh, the still very active nuclear arsenal that they have. You need to understand that... Um, but there are other countries with nuclear weapons, There are right? other countries with nuclear, but easily 90% of the nuclear arsenal that is on the planet sits between those two countries. Mm. You know, so like France got a couple, Israel got a couple. Pakistan. Um, Pakistan, India... China, of course. Um, China, to, uh, North Korea might be close as well. That it was saying Iran was a little close to than I was saying, but it. But even one on the stage shifts the balance of power because it's su like it's seen as such an atrocious thing that if you should do that, probably everybody will turn against you. Like at that point, but mm. if you have enough that you can hit everybody while they hit you or before that they hit you, then then all of a sudden then that game changes. You don't want to mess with the crazy man with an AK like forty seven in a crowded room. A crazy man with a knife, maybe, but not with the ability to kill the whole room. And that ultimately is what makes this very fucking scary. Because but yeah, I, that's what I wanted to ask. Are you worried? Beyond. But beyond. we are in a tiny beyond. island, far, far, far away. Uh, well, look, we. I think that we will get to that in the next like segment because one thing that I wanted to do, um. You and I, again, we love history and we try to learn as much as we can, but we we know it's boring for like a lot of people. Like it's not really that interesting on one another. So and I at the very least would, would want to give con con context because yeah. I don't think that there's a good guy in this thing. Okay. There there is no if there's a good guy to be called, I think European Union, Germany in particular after a fashion, right? After a fashion. But there's no if, if, out and out good guy. Yeah, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. No, yeah, because I'm thinking about NATO at this moment. Right. Because they at, because they're at fault too. At the at, and know? I'm looking at the European Union and I'm not sure if I can agree with the statement that they are the good guys. Like I said, maybe. Maybe you could see okay. it as that. But okay, there context. Is, look, Come. um this thing is longer what what Putin is aspiring to, he had a um, he had a speech that he made right after the troops like started moving. I want to say like it was like about an hour long, mm -hmm. like kind of like a diatribe a speech, but it was very telling of certain words that he used. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of people thinking, oh, this is Soviet Union too, like like two point like like mm -hmm. all over again that they're going after communism and that mm -hmm. type of thing. But he didn't use the word Soviet Empire, which there was. Mm. He used Russian Empire, which was interesting because the Soviet Empire is easily what happened after the Bolshevik Revolution and everything else, right? The Russian Empire goes back a lot further. Like, that is like the unification of Russia as a country to define its borders as it was, uh, came together roughly after the conquering of like Genghis Khan and all that past Dan Sekhmar. Mm -hmm. Um, and that whole idea of Russian Slavic identity is very much tied into at least how Putin is talking to. And that, in a weird way, it's kind of what, um, if you want to give it a good hat, if you want to give him a reason, you might not agree with it. But Russia for a long time has felt that Ukraine is Russia. 
mm-hmm. like past Russian governments and whatnot. It is only with the fall of um, of the Soviet Union, and there was a brief I- moment in time before that too, like as well before all of that came about. I think before World War Two, that Ukraine had like independence, but. Mm-hmm. No, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, yeah, just just because you say Russia feels or for a long time felt that Ukraine is Russia. Right. But I don't know if it's for a long time or if it's the narrative recently and it's being pushed, pushed and pumped and pumped. Mm. Because according to me, Kiev was a metropole mm-hmm. way before Moscow even was something. This is true. So this is I true. I think the narrative has been spun and that is being pushed right so that russia is starting to believe i don't know exactly when it happened but russia is starting to believe in its grandeur right and there my thereby diminishing all the rest surrounding them forgetting a, a rich history right. before that russia was 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 the empire that it was right the the thing that we can agree on this isn't now. This is 200, 300, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in certain cases, 400 years old. You know what I mean? This isn't our lifetime. This isn't like one particular thing. It's 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 layers of layers of grievances, kind of reactions, world things that have happened, grand movements both within and without, all that type of shit. And one of the things that, again, and uh, this is really bringing it down to like a sentence, right? Mm-hmm. Russia, for all its glory that it, that, that it has seen in the past, was was kind of knocked around a lot as a country over the years. Mm-hmm. You got to remember, um, Hitler tried to invade. And while the Nazis were not successful, it was a little bit of luck and a whole, and a whole lot of bloodshed. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, what it was? It was over like a million, um, basically, Russian casualties in World War II as opposed to you know, a couple thousand there, a hundred thousand there, like whatever. They they lost a lot. Yeah. And what happened was is that um, a lot of their infrastructure got burned to the ground for all kinds of reasons, mm-hmm. right? That was Hitler. Napoleon did the same goddamn thing. Napoleon was after them too. And that a, a lot of, you know, armchair kind of historians feel that the, the play into Russia is what broke Napoleon's empire like as well because... Um, you got, you went for a lot, but you got like a little and your supply lines was too, um, too stretched because the place is too big and you went in the winter and your men were demoralized mm. and all of this. So, and Russia kind of got his knock mode from that. As said before, Genghis Khan completely owned that area in the beginning of one. And so, and they've always had a thing of, they look out for conquerors. They always kind of look out for who is trying to invade them. They, like, there's a Russian paranoia that is real. You know what I mean? It might not make sense to us, but it makes sense to them. But also, in I'm not a, I'm not a Russian expert. I'm not even... I don't know a lot about uh, you know, Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. My, um, so you're saying... So I'm listening to you, but I also think that Russia kind of had this air of, like, but we're the best. So, like, Russia's... Um, Cultural history is very rich. It's it's literature. Yeah. It's 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 philosophy art, and dancing. Um, thinkers, uh, produce mathematicians, great, great thinkers, like, science. Great, a lot. Yeah. So Russia is is eigenlijk if you if you just look at it in terms of of development, in terms of how things came to be, right. um, very influential. And and they they came they they introduced a lot of stuff. But I feel and that Russia feels that they never really got the recognition. Right. So they they are, I think, um, and it's kind of hurtful too, you know. Because let's be honest and real too, like as well, y'all don't get it twisted. You you had called like um, the immense gas that that Russia can export, right? It ain't just that they have gold mines, they have diamond mines, they have like like iron ore, like they're like the third biggest exporter of like iron like in the world if not the first i'm not quite sure and we have to mention that russia is the biggest country in the world so it, it would make it would make sense that they have all these yo they that have, they have everything basically they have a lot they have a lot and they just for modern history russia never seemed to quite get it together they had one good moment up until 
um, the Bolshevik kind of revolution, and that was where you had still kind of serfdom, and the Tsar was abusing the populace. Not true malice per se, but true ontwetendheid in the sense of you don't bother with your people, and your people are suffering, and they see you in opulence, so they get mad. And that that was a lot of what triggered uh, Marxist theory and um, Lenin and those boys to kind of kick but in. I ass. don't know if it's true, like you state, like Russia never got it together, or if that is the narrative. You know that look, they they've had moments in the sun, but. As much as they've had moments in the sun, they've also shot themselves in the foot. Let's let's not be let's not take it too bad like either. For for as paranoid as they are, they've mm-hmm. been bad guys a lot in the past as well. Um, Afghanistan is is very much in um, the, the current like kind of memory. Um, you had the the Russo Japanese war way back when that that kicked off Japan's paranoia and why they had to kind of militarize as well. Mm-hmm. Um and and there were other forays I can't quite bring them. Somebody's gonna correct me. I'd probably open Margot, but <laughs> <laughs> right. But there was a lot that they also did wrong. And it's like every time that they got their moment in the sun, mm-hmm. they kind of shot themselves in the foot. Mm. Like 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 they would build up for like about a generation, and then all of a sudden, some weird you know um prince that it had ain't no good like a like Edward the I want to say the third, but I'm not quite sure. My wife is gonna correct me like on that one. But somebody that's kind of half crack and too inbred comes and squanders whatever gains that was mm-hmm. made, you know? Mm-hmm. And for that reason is why you would say that maybe that they've never gotten it quite sound, you know what I mean? And they've always, just as you said, they feel like they're owed more. Like a cultural zeitgeist of, or at least amongst the intellectual elite, mm-hmm. that the place is owed more, but they never quite got it. Mm-hmm. And Putin... For all his faults, I think he definitely comes out, out of that camp that he knows what it used to be and he knows how great it used to be. And he definitely has a sting of nationalistic pride that has not been kind of satiated yet. Yeah. What I don't, and I'll put this and then I'll give you the last word and then we'll maybe get into like ramifications and kind of like um, yeah. like the conjectures and whatnot. But the one thing that I don't make sense about this and what and why I'm, why I'm actually worried Putin has been quote unquote a bad actor on the world stage for 20 years now. We those that know know news and what's going on know that he's been silencing the media. He's been a strong man of strong mm. men. He's been doing a lot of bullshit, but but real sneaky and kind of incremental and always with a fig leaf and always had an excuse. Very strategic. Yeah. Like this miles ahead. This nigga was a chess man, man master man. Mm-hmm. You were right there. You nearly had Europe over a barrel with a Nordstrom pipeline for gas. Mm. It 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 was like maybe four months away from like proper ratification and being locked in. Why would you jump the gun now? Why did you accelerate the, your timeline? You could do this move in the summer where you have still the mobility of your tanks and everything else. Because once winter kicks in, that then is a different story again, mm-hmm. right? But you had a chance to give this some time to get to where you need to go. You have them over about like you almost got everybody locked in to you. They can't get around you. Mm-hmm. Why would you play your hand so early? And that the, the 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 conspiracy theories that are coming out, the weird theories that are coming out, something's wrong with him. And a lot of people are thinking or hoping, in certain cases, that he's kind of losing it. That he's. But I would not hope that somebody who has the biggest one of the biggest nuclear arsenals in the world is losing it and that's why i'm scared because it's not rational no more you can't predict i don't know it. if it's no you can't predict you it can, you I, can't predict for it us it's not rational but i cannot say that it's not rational as we you know check our last episode mm-hmm. we spoke about the iceberg or the outer layers of the of the onion Right. And there are things that we are not seeing and not understand. So right. th- th- there might be things that we're not seeing and not understanding. It's not... N- not it's even a- like, pro- probably. Because, so because you I'm and I are only sure getting what a- the TV like has given us. Exactly. I don't know if it's a big man losing his mind. Uh, a not. guy with a big ego. Or that there is something that we are not seeing yet. Like a strategic play that also come into play as well. Look, like I said, I'm I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I'm nervous as f- like I haven't been this nervous since 9-11. I haven't been this nervous. Like I've like I've learned to live with the bullshit in the world. 
but I haven't been this nervous since about that time, about about 2001. And is precisely just as you said, it is. It doesn't make sense for where we are right now. It can't make sense, and I'm praying to God that that's not the trend. But I don't know. I don't know, you know? if it, if I, like it doesn't make sense. But if you if you go to look just on sec at Ukraine, right? They are also they have also a lot of minerals, grondstoffen, like resources yeah. Yeah. that that could be beneficial to Russia as well. That's, number one in this, number two in that, like a whole barrage of things. That's also a theory as well that um that COVID kind of knocked shit into Russia that we don't know, and um especially where food is concerned that they might want to conquer. The Ukraine to be able to fill up the bread basket just a bit, you know what I mean. So on the other hand, Ukraine is bordering on all the NATO countries. Exactly. Ukraine is 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 this the foot in Europe? Which was this was also, um, by scholars called uh, to be exacerbated by NATO expansion, because it's because the North Atlantic a Treaty like organization. It's a bit of a relic, but it still has its uses apparently in this world. And NATO is there purely because it was a uh, sort of like a shield against uh, Soviet expansion during the Cold War. How it began, it was England, France, Italy, like all the all the other allies in mm-hmm. World War Two, along with the states and backed mostly by the states to kind of like have like a like a. Here and no more, because you can have the Ukraine, you can have Hungary, you can have Romania, all those Eastern blocs, like, you know, like spots. But but the iron, the curtain stops here. Yeah. And so thusly, Russia might be able to scrap and beat a France by itself. But if you scrap with France, you got to scrap with all of us. And then all of a sudden, it became kind of balanced again. It was yeah. tense, but it was balanced. But then the Soviet Union fell, and you still had NATO. And so that combined with how they expanded NATO, because... Poland is in NATO. Different other, like like former Eastern Bloc countries, which is right on Russia's doorstep, and again this plays into their paranoia. All of a sudden, these guys are made like like are in the NATO as well, and mm-hmm. that was kind of like the red line in the sand. Like, yo, dread if Ukraine, which Ukraine was trying to do, yeah. if they get NATO, like you know, like like acceptance. Fuck y'all, we are gonna have a fight. Like, like that's what Putin basically said, and it came down to this. But instead of him backing down and saying, "Okay, you know what? I'll take the win," and they said diplomatically that it's not gonna happen because mm. right before the advance, you know, even the Ukraine was like, "All right, you know what? We're gonna back off of this. It's just a dream. We're gonna do this and that." He still kind of went ahead, which again comes back to what I'm saying: doesn't make no fucking sense. It makes no fucking but sense. But maybe it's just, yeah, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a guy tough, strong guy, <laughs> as we like to say. Maybe it strong. is. And he he's just he just wants to see what is NATO going to do. Is NATO, maybe he's just want to test NATO, eh? Is NATO going to do anything? Yeah, but... We take you, over Ukraine and the next uh, next foot is in Poland or I don't know, one of those other you, countries. But you kill your country economically to prove a point? That sounds weird to me, man. Because again, he's he's a lot smarter than you and I. He's a lot yeah, smarter than yeah. like a room of us combined put together. That he had to have known sanctions of a, of a, of, a, of a particular kind were coming. Yeah. Even if he has bad advisors, like even if he has like I'm sure the man reads a newspaper. I'm sure like he's had de- dealings with this and that and the third. So him in his own capacity should have anticipated some of this shit, right? And it just uh, it like it it makes no sense. That's what got me fucked up. It makes if if it made sense, if I could say like Crimea, like after a fashion made sense to me. Why? Because it was in and out. It was, it it was probably set up with insurgents. It was like he he slipped through all of the excuses properly. This one, it felt like he had to pee, and he couldn't wait no more, and he just bust in the house. You know what I mean? Like like. Like it yeah. felt like you didn't have any patience. It felt like something went wrong here. Something, something went wrong, and we'll get to that too in the next like, section. And it sounded like he got some bad advice as well. No, but the interesting, the interesting. Yes. I thought ah, you thought you thought put it that. You thought you thought put it that. Something. I thought a thing or two. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, that's actually pretty funny that's actually pretty funny um 
Nou ben ik helemaal uh, yeah, met, yeah, met yeah. Twins. No, um, Cry Mirror was the one that we came out of. Ja. Oké, nou. Ja, nou, I don't know. <laughs> Our our producer told us that we're like it's time to because we've we've been running along these last couple of episodes, so we decide to make sure that we're gonna rein it in a bit. Um I think this is this might be a good like stopping point. Yeah, um, we need to refill in any Zoe case, Zoe, Zoe, yeah. And feel free to do the same. We are going to refill, but also in the next segment we are going to try to tackle because it's in the world, but ultimately, like she said, we live on a we live on a little island about eight thousand miles away. We need to figure out what's gonna happen here. Yeah. So um yeah, like kind of stick with us and guys, we will be right back. Blood and Sand at your favorite bar. We're back. We are back. Um, hi. Hey. <laughs> hey. We have re-upped on a Tuesday evening. And uh, we are definitely talking some heavy shit, so definitely got to get comfortable and try to sort out through all this nonsense. D, I'm going to ask you just to, uh, like, jump into it quick and just, like, kind of get to where we need to go to. What do you think all, all of this has an effect on our daily lives here? Like, what do you think is going to happen? I think um, the most apparent thing is going to be uh, rising prices of everything. Um, we are an island that imports everything. Mm. Um, so I think everything is going to be much more expensive. Right. So... Yeah, that that is what I see, but I don't know. Mm. I, I, look, I will tell you one one motherfucking thing right now. And even though I'm forty, I got flat feet and I'm fat as a fuck. But I'm immensely glad that the draft is not a thing with us right now. Like I am. Um, again, we are we are a Dutch country, and I'll I'll give you some food for thought if you don't mind. Because hell, like in your previous job, you were dealing a lot with like diplomatic kind of relations and whatnot. Venezuela, which is very communist and Russia friendly, is right there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like it's like a hop, skip, and a jump with a boat. It's right there. And should this thing turn ugly, should should this thing turn global, like that's also something that, 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 that I'm looking at too, like as well that maybe this is Cuban Missile Crisis 2.0, where mm-hmm. they would want to use Venezuela as a like as a jumping off point. Mm. May maybe they activate the 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 kind of U.S. base a little stronger here too, like as well. Like there's a lot of little ways that this thing could go. Yeah, a lot of people and here are worried, and they're constantly referring to Venezuela, Venezuela, Venezuela. Oh, oh, oh like where? Like that's what that's the thing. Are... Um, we even uh-huh. have our uh, favorite uh, parliamentarian, um, Renox Thomas. And he is saying that uh, we, as Curacao, should take a stand because, yeah, we're part of the Dutch Kingdom. Dutch Kingdom is European Union. Uh, European Union is pro-Ukraine. and Or uh, in any case, uh, against Russia. Mm. So we don't really have a say because, yeah, we are Dutch. Basically. So he wants us to, I don't know, talk to whoever. Maybe we should call a Putin. I don't know. <laughs> to tell him that yeah we're Dutch but this is not our standpoint. Leave us alone. We're not in this thing. We don't want to be in this mess. That has got to be in you saying that and me hearing it right now. That has got to be some of the most political grandstanding of bullshit that I've ever seen. Well, he didn't say call up Putin, huh? But no, but I mean they don't give a fuck about. Look, I look. Who, I, who you be? Who the fuck are you? I'm making statements in the Zinvan a military action, but if if it's just like if it stays 
if the fighting stays there where it's at and it's more kind of economical or what and so here don't make a fucking like here is not a butterfly's fart worth of thinking no for, but for like any any country but Nader, our Nader proximity Lund- to venezuela don't you mm-hmm. think there's merit to that I'm what okay, so even though I am worried about that in the grander scale of things, realistically speaking, I'm not that worried. The reason being is this Venezuela shot itself in the foot so heavily in, in the last ten years, there's little to no infrastructure that can be found out of or called of or whatnot. To get um any kind of material down this side requires shipping of the highest order. So is not 1942 where merchant boats could sneak in shit and whatnot. Satellites got eyes on every fucking thing, mm-hmm. and anything that comes out of a comes out of a particular place to go to a, like a particular place. And Venezuela's already done a hot spot and on a watch list for like a long time because of the coup and because of this and that and whatnot. I don't think that out of the blue, Russia or whoever that might think in that would want to. Turn like they would have to have a navy come down this side first to control the waters before any of that happens. And if that happens, then we don't fuck like anyway. No, but then yes, would huh? they fire missiles on us? Do like they don't does, have to? Ho- does Holland even care about us? I mean, they don't have on. to. All they gotta do is prevent any fuck any food ships from coming in. That's it. I happy Blockades. I have my tire blood in my yard. Yo, bl- my no- spinach. No bullshit. All they gotta do is just block blockade. If they blockade and it's in international waters and that we are in some deep doo doo. Yeah, then we're fucked. We are in some deep doo doo because I don't see us having the agricultural infrastructure to be able to support ourselves. We could do fair, we could do a lot, but we can't do everything. And I, yeah, at that point we would need to sort it out. And then at that point, Nayland would have to jump in. The, the the EU or maybe NATO as a grander scale would have to jump in and that would be an escalation of actions as well. Yeah, to me it's so, not a likely scenario. Right, I'm not worried about that. But what but what you called is something that I am kind of worried about, that the knock-on effect, because in, in particular, because they are not laboring gas, like Russia's not laboring gas to Europe in a particular energy crunch that they're into right now to like as well, they have to get it from somewhere or something has to happen. Mm-hmm. Economics, you know, demands that scarce that drives, drives a price up. Yep. And across the globe, we're already seeing it today, self or tomorrow, if I'm not today. mistaken, that the gas price is going to go like true. Today, the gas price. Uh, the gasoline like price and the diesel cents. price. But that yeah. is not, that didn't have to do with Ukraine, but Alone. now, but now, but it's coming. It's coming, yeah. It's, it's coming. coming. We have to go through our stores at some point, right? And we're not refining our own shit no more, like either. And all of the, all Even that has when enough... we were refining, it was not our own shit. But you did have a benefit of it. But you did have a benefit of it. Like you mm. did have a, you did have a very supling of pricing. Of yeah, whatnot, okay. Right. So, but I think if if Venezuela is in the game. It's going to be because Russia needs oil. So but, yeah, but but my, Russia don't need oil. They have they have their own. So I'm like, yeah, everybody talking Venezuela and oh, I'm I I no, I don't it's, know. No, I it's, don't know. It's it's not likely. Look, price we are going to get leaner in the next year easily. Like we've already started to feel it from all from all kinds of angles. Be it, um supply chain um like you know like shortages or whatnot or so covid being a thing that also drove up the gas kind of prices as mm-hmm. well every one of us is going to have to learn to do with less in the next year easily this is going to make it worse that that's that's all there is basically to it the next thing that is on top of that too is that it it kind of determines putin did something that nobody ain't seen in ever and that is he united Europe. Europe always Didn't had the see Union. Didn't ever. Um, so the Second World War. Then Europe was the not as united as formation of um, the, the United uni- Nations. Yeah, I understand and all, the all of that. Formation of the European Union, Eurovision Song Festival, Europe, football. Europe has not been this united, I don't think, ever in history. And in particular, of note is that. 
for people that would war that were war weary for so long because of World War Two, because of the Cold War, they never spent much, and especially Germany. Mm-hmm. Germany was so guilt ridden by their mm-hmm. history with with like Nazism and with kind of building up of the military industrial com- complex. They stayed away from that shit for as long as humanly po- possible. Mm-hmm. This week, they have pledged two percent of their GDP and maybe more. They have already started to buy stuff. Like Europe as a bloc has already started to buy weapons to give to the Ukraine. They have military buildup and defense on their minds. And it should be noted that no. Germany is the biggest uh, consumer, is the biggest buyer right. of Russian gas. Right. So for them to make all these, uh, yeah, how you call it, to and to do all this for and, Ukraine and is, is, is saying flip, a yeah. lot. Is saying a lot. Yeah. Here's here's an interesting <clears throat> one, and and this is the one. So. That same thing that they were like the biggest, um, the biggest client, right? It has made them rethink their like energy stance in a week. Like mm. literally, they have started to think about other things now. You might see the see the rise of nuclear power like again because we're not getting wind and solar up like how do we want to fast enough? And well, and, yeah. and and there are energy needs that need to be handled today. There's a lot of decommissioned nuclear power plants that were perfectly fine or just need a little bit of like you know they need a bit of like kind of like a renovation or whatever and then all of a sudden you you have kind of power again it is only because of the stigma of like chernobyl and maybe lately with fukushima like or whatever but that was a natural disaster that exacerbated yeah. something yeah right People might be thinking different about nuclear power, knowing more now, having the internet, knowing what the pros and cons are, and not just being scared of of uh unknown kind of a boogeyman or whatever the fuck. That might change too as well. You he might have Putin might have accelerated like green thought or getting off of fossil fuel thought more than he realized. See, that, like, that, that's what I that is what I'm hoping. I'm not thinking about the uh, about the uh, Karen Inashir, so about the nuclear, uh, whatever you want to call it. Right. But I'm thinking, I'm hoping that this is a push for um, the development and the research into um, solar and wind and water and, and, and temperature energy. Because at the moment, the, the, the biggest problem, for example, here, but the biggest problem is there is no saving capacity. You can, if you have solar panels... Right. You can generate the 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 sun during the day, right. but the the batteries at this moment are not way too expensive. Um, yeah, we cannot get the bit the big batteries that you would need to store energy for to to run the entire country. Right, and I'm hoping that this is okay. That is a long process. That this is not gonna help you tomorrow. But I'm right. hoping that this thinking is or a that this, this is a catalyst right. to to right. further research to come up with better ways to make cheaper batteries so that we could store all of the, the 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 natural resources that we already have that we can convert it into energy and that we can actually use that i'm not i'm not going to tell you no bullshit i'm hoping that this is one hell of a wake up call for at least the caribbean in that same vein not just with energy concerns but with a lot of concerns when it comes to like just long and short what do we need to live what do you need to live? Like, what do you need to live to be able to say, look, I will give maybe a concession to internet. You need still access to the outside world mm-hmm. to be able to to have that going. You know yeah. what I mean? But to run our own books, to run our own economy, to, to maybe have a ship or two, not international kind of shipping, like we got to go to Miami and this and that one. So, but if we can get by Vorbuild agriculture from... Suriname, build our own agriculture to suit theirs and be kind of like a symbiosis. Mm-hmm. Trade, trade with up top. Start up certain I- industries that that have went dead in the Caribbean, like bauxite and like and like aluminium mining and that type of shit. Mm. We had, dude, we had it. We it, it across the board. Every island had a thing, mm. and I'm wondering between Caracom, between all the different things that are already there and that's available, how much can we do for ourselves? Not to live high life, we're not driving Audis here, but just get true, get it done, live life, teach ourselves. We can't defend ourselves. That's the one fucking thing. We got to buy guns. 
You have to buy guns. You gotta buy weaponry. You gotta build your army. You gotta do all that shit. And that let's stay fucking be... Dutch and leave leave the Dutch do it. Yeah, no, no, but but even to to like that, how much would the Dutch be interested in having us be as self sufficient as possible? I I would think a lot. They would want yeah, to like because... not to not bother with us. They would like to be proud of the fact. Yeah, like you see, they, this is where like you know like colonization worked. Like you know, like as like a like a like a hero story or whatever the fuck. That is what I'm thinking, and I'm 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 wondering what we can do for ourselves. Like, it's a con- like it's a conversation me and me and a partner man been having for like years now, as to what are the interesting ways that we can turn it around here so that we don't have to be as heavily affected by the goings on of mad men or strong men in the outside world. You and I, and not have- only mad men pandemics yeah um financial crises abroad um, hurricanes motherfucker like uh, like external forces basically mm-hmm. yeah i think what, that- what what would it need listen what would it take for us again it's not perfect you're not not 100 self-sufficient and sustainable Easily, tourism would have to be a part of that matrix, like as well. But not the way it is right now. Not the way that, that it is right now. Should be sustainable. Right. No, and and more and more with respect and empathy, because yeah. the idea of Caribbean tourism, as we discussed last, y'all really got to check that episode of last week, boy. Marga was a hit, right? Mm. But is like you got to give up, up like a part of your self respect and your soul to be able to. Pardon me for all my white folk out there. You gotta serve the white man. You know what I mean? You gotta be hand and foot, be ready to give them their every dream. And there's another way to do that. There's another way to be able to go work that out and st- and and still be cool and still be desirable and still be like you pay top dollar for that experience. There yeah. gotta be a way to fucking do it. Yeah, we've never been interested because it's been like it got comfortable. That's like, an easy got... cash cow. So exactly, like... or rather, the script is a cash cow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, play a little bit of Bob Marley when they get off the plane. You know, everybody in white. And there's like a tennis talk, court. Talk and a, like Jurani Martina. Yes, I know. And, yes. and, 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 and maybe, you know, like a couple of mandingos and big titty girls like at the club. Like, like that's about it so that they can have their romantic entanglement. That has been the script. That, that has been the script for like a long time. And yeah. I don't know. Like, I think that there's a better way. What I love is like newer, younger, like tour guys, like like especially, yeah, that they're doing this whole thing of experience. That they're not bringing you to like the fancy restaurant. No, they're bringing you to to like to like Plaza Noble or Plaza Bio, mm-hmm. and like that's a like a marketplace where they sell food and whatnot and whatnot here. But it's local food, and they give you a walking tour of okay, this is that, and this is what it means to us. They let you play like a domino game. They get your hair braided like that type of shit. Yeah. But it's a is not corny is an experience and it's mm-hmm. something that you can Instagram. It's something you can, that I think is may, maybe the way forward. I don't know. Like hopefully that, that will evolve over time with the, with the younger ones coming up. Um, I would definitely want to see industry be more done well here. Cause you already have a sliver of a spine of it here. You have your soap, you have, um, you have your cement industry here, obviously oil, yeah. Um. Different other things. Like, I'd like to see more industry here to look as well. Maybe service. Maybe. Uh, well, we like used some... to be a service island. It, yeah. It, it, it disappeared, I guess. Yeah, with outsourcing from tourism, but we're not per se doing. No, but the we know why. But we know why the service disappeared, man. You know why? It was offshore that's a, banking. That's a whole other show. That's <laughs> another show. That's another offshore show. Offshore banking, you bastards! Give it back. <laughs> that's another show. Nayland and, and like and like and like and like Ireland, y'all y'all are bastards. Y'all gotta get it back, man. Y'all don't 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 need it as much as we do. Fuck it. But you yeah. know, but but like yeah, but um, definitely to become more self kind of sufficient, own gardens, own you know, got a little goat in the back, got a little kind of chicken in the back. You get your own eggs or that type of shit. Yeah. You know, sorry, vegans, you know, but yeah, like we need a little bit of uh, like live livestock to kind of get it going. Yeah. And I, I would love to see it. Like I, I, like I would love to be able to see it and maybe new approaches towards like education as well. That definitely, definitely. Like, like new approaches definitely. towards 
that again, you're not dependent, you're not solely wholly dependent on the outside world. I love the fact that the University of Curacao exists. Like I used to look my nose, like down my nose at Una, because I was offered that. Yeah. Like my mother tell me, like you can go to Nederland or you can come down here, and I, I'm not gonna go where where all where where, where all the locals go. No, of course not. You know, like I was mm-hmm. a fucking snob. But if you think about it, that that's actually pretty dope. It's like you have enough, like of a of of an ecosystem of intellectuals teaching each other to want to go forward, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know what it looks like. You can have your own tertiary proper thing going, hold to particular standards, and we go down the road, and you see where good thought comes from. Yeah, I think you know? even though we have a university, I think that's what I'm missing a little bit, the intellectuals, because the uh, you need um, original thought and you need deep thought and you need analysis and you need uh, weaving together different theories, different um, systems of knowledge, I think, to prosper, to develop. Right. And... Um, I'm not saying that we don't have any. I mean, there's a lot of great <laughs> stuff going on. I mean, Marco was here last week. Yes, sir. Uh, different groups. So there are pockets of uh, intellectuals. And, and I'm not saying that they're the, za- the savior, but we need all sorts of people in, in, in a country for a country to be, you know, to be running well. But here's the thing, though. Yeah. Um, do you think that I'll say Curacao first, but I mean wider Caribbean culture. Knowing what you know, knowing what I know. Do you think that we foster and support and like help breed curiosity? Well, curiosity, I'm not sure, or not in the ways that are conducive to development, to right. societal and industrial and creative development. Right. I think because, I mean, Redu, like Mele, like gossip is a big thing here. <laughs> and that, that has to do with curiosity. Okay? So, but but if I look at, so I'm always looking at the British islands. Huh? If yeah. you look, if you look at a Barbados, if you look like at the Trinidad, if you look at a Jamaican, um, it is so different. And, and, and you have a strong um, intellectual community and you see in, 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 in places of power, you see in, within government, you see within, within in, the, in the business world, like CEOs and stuff, those are, are people who really know their shit. And I'm not saying that you need to be intellectual. I'm not saying you need to be an academic um, to no. have a certain function. But there needs to be a level of, of thought and a level of discourse, not a discourse, a level In, of, of, of... Intellectual honesty. Like, and it, it always is going to sound snobbish coming out of my mouth, but you need to be taught how to think, if that makes any sense. Like, not taught, like, like not like indoctrination, but more like Socratic method of... Questioning, questioning yeah, a thing, yeah, I, critiquing a thing, uh, yeah, that's cra- that, you know, yeah. breaking down a thing to its yeah. core essence or whatnot. What a thing is, you know, like what I mean? wondering what is it, how does it work or not work, and are and, we being honest amongst ourselves for how that we're viewing the thing? Yeah, is my own opinion to be trusted? Like at this point, like, and, like that type of thing. And how can it contribute to a better living for Correct. all or for most? You know, Some, yeah. yeah, no, but that and that is where I think that for whatever reason it is kind of missing it in the Caribbean that I, I I always come back down to speak when spoken to come when called like that mechanism within our culture that it ain't for you to know I know for you like I will I am your elder I am your like your overster your your chief your whatever and I could tell you what the hell is going on. You don't need to. And only when I speak to you, when I tell you what's going on, are you allowed to speak. Like that higher, like rigid hierarchy, like after a while. You know, I like, don't agree that it's woman? missing in the Caribbean, but it should be more, it should be uh, wider and it should be uh, more visible, I think. But It's I, not taken away from all of the heroes that have done what they've done so far. No. We've come, the very fact that we've acknowledged feminism in the Caribbean have we? Yeah, we have. 
y'all have your little pocket. Y'all, y'all don't, like, like it's y'all, not widely embraced. Y'all, y'all, are you not a feminist? I, I thought you were my feminist friend, man. I am an ally. <laughs> Never, never. <laughs> pum, 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 pum. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, look. I no, but so but we got that... from the war in Ukraine to um, Caribbean feminism. Basically, only the drunken monks. No, only no, the drunken no, monks. Do you know what it is? It comes all the way back around. Mm. It comes all all the way back around because Putin is playing from a playbook that is very antiquated. A lot of the politicians that are also running this fucking thing and who are. And for the next weeks and months, are going to determine the fucking lives of everybody on, on the planet, if you want to look at it like that way. A plan from old playbooks. Biden is playing from an old playbook. Biden saw But these World are War old II. people. Exactly. Come on, oldies. Exactly. Give the world to the youth. Exactly. And no, but, you, but you're not supposed to. You see, and that's part of the problem. You and I grew up kumbaya, like, or rather trying to be. And... Then you don't that I came change out this Rekosi Trump, but you okay. you don't you don't change the world with doves and with sunflowers. You change the world with blood and with sweat and with tears. And our generation, for whatever reason, we don't like to pull the trigger. We like oh, to discuss. Oh wait, that, no, no, my You say Wachtefe. you change the world with blood, sweat, and tears. Correct. Then Putin is not so antiquated. He's going the blood the blood route. That is the antiquated way of doing things. Oh, okay. That that no, is no. the antiquated way. So what we, what is the new way of doing things? You need to be out, and it's gonna be funny. And my friends always look at me wrong when I say it. You gotta be Bugs Bunny in this fucking situation. You have to be clever. You have to be clever, and a little bit kind of evil, like malice, but not too much. You have to have. Like a certain amount of, if you fuck with me, you're gonna find out. Bugs Bunny always playing around, and he's living his life up until the bad guy messes with him. But can and then you- when he messes with him, Bugs Bunny brings all manner of clever, like clever evil to that dude. But don't you, you think check? then that Ukraine has that down pat? Zelensky has that. Yeah, don't Zelensky. Zelensky seems to got the. By the way, shout out to Zelensky, hey, man. Zelensky, you're one cool dude. Yo, apparently he's like a sex symbol now. Like every woman has. Not a not now, because he he was an actor, <laughs> eh? a comedian but actor. But he played so- a piano with his dick. <laughs> dude, not 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 every man can do that, man. Not every man can fucking pull but that off. You're, you know what you're, I mean? you're not hung up on the piano with a dick. I'm the like the leotard that was going on with Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Come on, man. No, but never ask. But but it's like you gotta be bugs, bugs bunny with the shit. And yes, I think Zelensky is a good example of that. Obama was a little bit that too. Like Zelensky, by the way, is the president Zelen- of the uh, Ukraine. Ukraine that was a comedian and an actor beforehand. Yeah, it's it's a weird story. This is the, if this it's don't get like so five weird. movies. No, it's it sounds like basically an American story. <laughs> if this don't get five movies made about it. Five mo- movies. One of them, like with Brad Pitt, like something wrong. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. wrong, right? But 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 the thing, just to bring it back to Ukraine, mm. um, what stood out to me, this, except yeah, what really stood out to me is that this war is about st- maybe every war, but in, now we're seeing it live as it unfolds. Is really about storytelling, I find. Mm-hmm. So it is what do propaganda. we tell what do we tell our, ourselves? Yeah, propaganda. Yeah, propaganda. But it's now a little bit more refined. Because if you look at at, at at Nazi Germany, I think propaganda was done in the in the height of his days and it was a certain type of propaganda. And now it's I think more subtle. Um And if you look at Ukraine, there are a lot of... So, so he's all A for context, um, given context. Um, the Ukrainians are very um, strijdbaar. What is strijdbaar? Um, um, they, very, they are resistant. They are very the- resistant. They're very proud. They're very patriotic. And people take up arms with pride because they're defending their home. They're defending, you know, the honor of their culture. I, I, like as an outsider looking in, yeah. I, I think that is what I'm seeing. So you already have that. That is all it. But to what I'm seeing is to to strengthen this this feeling of uh, uh, patriotism or to strengthen this feeling of of honor. You have these different stories. So you have a lot of stories coming out of of 
micro like like personal resistance stories and right. they go viral and i was i was looking at these things i was like oh my god it's awesome and then i'm reading some stuff that the stories might be fake so you have right. the story right exactly you have the story exactly. of the 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 russian navy ship that's going snake to the, island to snake island the snake island um ukrainians are in the in the the, the, the sand state like in the station so like at the harbor and the ship is communicating with uh with the with the island and it's saying okay guys ukrainians just you know um give up just surrender um if not you're gonna be dead or some story like that and the ukrainians say well go fuck yourself basically and they li- literally use the word <laughs> and, and and that is all oh, fantastic <laughs> then people said they died they didn't die i right. don't know I, and then people said it wasn't true then you had a story of the grandmother who went to a soldier, a Russian, this a Ukrainian grandmother went to a Russian soldier, gave him a handful of, of, of um, sunflowers, sunflower seeds. Yeah. Said, put it in your pocket. And he was like, huh? So that when you die, at least flowers will grow there where you died. Yeah. Right, um, yeah. Stories of grandmothers taking up AK-47s. Yeah. Um, stories- Zelensky by himself is a fucking myth. And his, and, his and, whole family is and like the Klitschko brothers as well. Uh, um, uh, heavyweight boxers. Uh, I forget which one is which, but one of them is the mayor of Kiev as well. And no bullshit. It's it like they have taken up arms. They said, you know what? You're gonna see our faces and not our backs. And Kiko Kiko, Talinsky out in the streets just Instagram and telling niggas, yo, dread, I'm here. Where the fuck you at? You know what I mean? Like that. You know that, you that have type of thing. people standing in front of yeah. tanks. Oh, kind of a heroic the deeds. fucking track no but there was one that was true though the fucking farmer that took a tractor and <laughs> took the tank that motherfucker was, was that real <laughs> yeah that that motherfucker was real that that motherfucker was real as shit not do look you are right there is a story to be told in all these things and at the end of the day is the story that's most popular and whoever won is gonna tell those stories as well and it just is basically what it is. But what I find interesting in this moment, just as you say, COVID pro- proved it beyond a shadow yeah. of a doubt. None of us, collectively, as mm-hmm. a people, individually in countries, individually in the world, whatever the fuck, the majority of us don't trust what the fuck we see no more. The majority yeah, of us but think... but with good reason. Yeah, the... The majority of us think that the government is lying is lying to us. You think that has gone away just because it's war now? No, people are gonna also let the, like in the moment in the honeymoon phase. Yeah, people are gonna be yeah, dread that my country's doing okay and this and that one and so you always have that in war. That if it's especially if a country it thinks itself to be the good guy, yeah, you'll always have that, and especially with the spin that goes on and whatnot. But I think also. everybody thinks themselves to be the good guy. Correct. Right? But after a while, and if, especially if shit goes on too long, you saw it in Vietnam, you saw it in, in Afghanistan with basically Russia, you saw it in Afghanistan with the states, you saw it in, in Iraq with the states, you saw it in like like th- different spots. If a conflict or a war drags on too long mm-hmm. and there's no justification for it and there's too much loss of life or it's like, like, like all of a sudden it's not fun anymore, your populace will turn like... like on you and what's weird is that russia already seems to have crossed that point already like it's already past the point because the loss of life like you just called it at the start of the show we had according to certain reports four thousand five thousand dead soldiers america didn't have that many dead soldiers in the entire run of the iraq war they had a lot of damage they had a lot of maiming and lost foot and whatnot but loss, actual loss of life, it never came up to four, and that's five, ten years in Iraq. Mm-hmm. In one week, you kill five thousand fucking Russian. But this soldiers. is what the Ukrainians say, huh? Correct, but it has to be something because state TV in uh, Russia admitted that there was loss of life when it came to soldiers yeah, as well. But loss of life team. 10 versus nee, 5,000? No, 10 you could doof. 10 as as big bad Russia as Putin you can doof. If you can't doof it no more, that means it had to be something. 
it had to be something big. It had to be something that Russia itself could not spin, that it could not turn around or whatever the fuck. So that means that it did something. Maybe 4,000, maybe 2,000, maybe somewhere in the fucking middle. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that that is an interesting story. That, to me, yeah. says like, yo, and that combined with, People know that they're going to get arrested. People know that they're going to go to jail. People know that they might even die, depending on how high you are up on the food chain and whatnot. They still protested in the middle of Kremlin, in the middle of Moscow. They still came out in numbers and be like, yo, Dred, we're not a part of this. We don't want to do this. Russian and Ukrainian athletes and entertainers did little micro things for themselves to make statements and whatnot, yeah. knowing that they're going home to bullshit. So... Putin, at the very least, is on shaky ground when it comes to the groundswell of people that he was expecting. Okay, you know what? I do this and I'm going to knock it out and then I'm a hero again. No, nah, nigga. People are not liking it. People are not liking it. Yeah. Come, yo, man, come true. Like, uh, like, like, I could see the gears turning. Like, what's going on with no, you? What's no, no. I had, like, I'm thinking of 500 things and then I'm thinking about the all, time. We, yeah, we all, we So all. I'm thinking, we're going for a break. Well, you can do one more? See, so yeah. Yeah, all right now. We'll one do more, one yeah. more segment. So, yeah, one more know, segment. Hopefully, more segment. you stay with us. Yeah, if man. not, wow. Well, yeah. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs> we will be right back, though, folks. <laughs> Penicillin Highball at your favorite bar. Whew. Yo, this one going along again, even though the segments are not long, but we're going long. See, <laughs> we are, we are back. So much to discuss, man. Jesus. Yeah, it's not one thing, is it? And and it's messed up that us that are trying to live just a regular life out here in paradise and we got to think about this weird shit. And you know <sighs> the thing also because if you listen to the news and everybody's so concerned with you know what what are the implications for 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 your country for the world economy for this and that and the other and I think sometimes we just forget that it's people's life and it, first and foremost it's own a personal and a national tragedy. Yeah, right. there's people hurting, people dying, people separated from their families. Yo, that one especially. That one houses one. gone, memories like on the verge of being just that. Only memories. This it it, it is. Um. Well, I feel okay. It has implications for us, and it's 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 something. But for us, it's it's just an inconvenience. Yeah. Eventually, for, uh, for, yeah. For for. Yeah, like people there it is gewoon letterlijk literally life and that so i hope that we do not forget uh the human suffering you know so, that- so no what like okay so before that i get into like a diatribe or whatnot one of the one like one of the things i've loved about um the media that i've consumed in the last i don't know maybe five maybe ten years is that when it comes to history a lot of the voices that I listen to, they 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 tend to, you know, um, downplay great man history. Mm-hmm. There is no, you know, like people like I would say Stalin this and Che Guevara, Guevara that, and and like Woodrow Wilson or, or or like FDR. They always talk about the great men, but great men don't happen in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Great men have assistance. Great men have a team. Great men have. Maybe a country behind them or whatever. Like, great men have women. Yeah, great just, men have casualties. Right, great. but but there's but it's no one man by himself that is like sitting at a table with you know like a wine goblet like ooh I shall now kill all the Jews or some shit like that. No, somebody had to help him. You check what mm-hmm. I mean? And for that, that that idea of looking at history through the eye. Uh, 
I, Margo, we called your name at least eight times in this fucking show here this evening. But like Margo called it like last week when that she was doing like um, research for something. And she said that she was looking at the prostitute and the sailors and everybody. That avenue of history to me needs more. It needs more to see, you know, great men play their games, but the small men suffer for it. You know what I mean? And I, I feel equally sad for the Russian soldier that has to go in and do this bullshit. And I feel equally sad for the you, 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 Ukrainian soldier that has to defend and also for the Ukrainian civilian that has to, to experience this shit and has yeah. to have families ripped apart and, you know, maybe death, maybe, you know, lose your family home, your, the place you've always known for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever the fuck. All of that shit just gone. And that seems to get lost in the bigger, like in the, like, the 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 cold calculation of it all the the oh yes there's gas concerns and there's geopolitical implications and China might be involved and money has to be exchanged and this and that so so somebody ain't sleeping in the bed this evening mm -hmm. somebody, somebody ain't, ain't gonna sleep in the bed ever for again life they, they're, somebody they're ain't gonna, gonna see the wife or their husband or their daughter or their son yeah, not coming home they somebody might get maimed heavily from this. Somebody might have to see somebody get maimed heavily from this. Somebody's going to be told in a weird way that they're other because you're either refugee or you're invading or you're defending and the propaganda's coming at you. It's okay. weird shit that's going to happen from all of this. Yes. Now you put me on some other... I had a question for you for about the... For lope from this war, like how is how you think it's going to end? Mm. But when you talked about othering, uh, a, a subject very familiar to us, mm. um, no. But when you talked about othering, um, I was thinking also about how certain media outlets have portrayed this war, because there have been BBC, American big channels, um, and even Al Jazeera. They were actually talking about, um, I mean, they meant this war hit close to home. So basically, to me, it's like, okay, this is really bad because it's. they were saying stuff like, yeah, but these are, are blue-eyed, blonde-haired people. Eh? <laughs> this, these are not I refugees. I was waiting for it. These were not refugees like from Africa or from uh, Syria. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah, these are yeah, people yeah. Like, like us. Okay, for, okay, okay, all right, all right, okay. all right, all right. First, first, a little caveat or or a little anecdote to give is not a fun one because it's fucked up. And if you see, um, if you see the BBC report on it, it might still need some verification. But Jesus Christ, it could be very well true. Apparently, um, the Ukraine has a certain segment of African students there to like as well. Um, people that went there to go study, to go do different things and whatnot. So, and um, seems to be that there's a certain amount of segregation when it comes to the evacuation of peoples. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's this one girl. Uh, like I swear to God, I got it on my Facebook. I, probably, I might even get the link to go put into the description. But there's this one. Um, this one girl. Uh, she's from Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken. She kind of documented her her escape her exodus out of the the ukraine god bless she's in poland now she she like made it over the border and everything else but she kind of like gave a first hand account from her experience as to trying to get out and you know the buses and the things that might be loaded up and moving people she told she and compatriots of hers were told nah y'all y'all need to walk this is for ukrainians this is not for you you know, and in that moment, I, you know, like I saw a joke with um, like Andrew Schultz and the boys. And because, of course, we're like a little late. They've already like, like, like kind of covered this and whatnot. But um, flagrant too, them boys, and uh, like they made a joke. You gonna find time in the middle of bombs dropping to be racist? Like, like, like nigga, like, like for real? No, but it was you a know? real sad stories. Like, yeah, like Niger yeah. I heard stories about Nigerian students in any case. That yeah. they they were waiting to get on the train and they were told get back 
to the back of the line so waiting for seven hours and then had to wait another it's, uh, seven hours it's, uh, reached the border with poland poland said no you cannot enter right. in harsh winter conditions had to stay on the border uh, because hey let, let's not be let's not make mistakes about this too Napana. this is the first of march but winter usually is like january february do not make a mistake with that shit you know what i mean and no it's just look but but i i kind of liken it to this point right there there is no there will never be a good guy in these kind of situations there mm. will be people that we kind of you know we kind of feel with we kind of say all right this is that one and so and definitely when it comes to like being like we were grown up in the west yeah and so obviously america and democracy and whatnot has always been the good guy in the back of our heads. You check what I mean? Maybe not America these last days, but definitely the idea of democracy coming out of Greece and whatnot, and the idea of 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 freedom and and like agency and all that shit will always be our kind of like a go to type of thing. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that we're right. That doesn't always necessarily mean that we're right. And the, and and the things that need to be done to keep those ideals in place to to keep those things going doesn't necessarily mean that we're right and i th- i just you was gonna ask me what i think is gonna happen from this right yeah look i i really think i really think even with corporations taking over every fucking aspect of life or whatever i think that the democratization of speech I think the democratization of tech, I think the, the democratization of information will ultimately do humanity good if we give it a chance. And I think that a lot of, it's optimistic. I know. I know because you rolled your eyes already. I I know how it sounds, but I think, I don't think that you and I are going to see the benefit of it. I don't think that you and I, I think, I genuinely think that we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot humanity is going to mm-hmm. shoot ourselves in foot, be it nuclear winter or climate change or some fuck that we are going to have to retreat into like 10 billion becomes one again or 10 billion becomes a half a billion or 10 billion becomes like we are going to see an incrimping of humanity because mm-hmm. we can't get a, a we can't get away from ourselves. Mm. But I also think that in that moment where that extreme pain that has been shown in history to teach when you got pain and discomfort, when you got blood that happens and people really see what is what what life is worth, I think there's a chance to grow. I think there's a chance to learn. I'm hoping that my kids are gonna survive it. I'm I'm hoping that we all don't have to get that far and it to have to be that extreme. I'm hoping that the seas rising does not destroy my beautiful Caribbean, you know what I mean? But I do think that we are at a moment of reckoning and an age of Aquarius that we made a joke about at a way back when, but I think that we're at that moment. We're at a turning point and Putin and his ilk, Trump and his ilk, Biden and his ilk, Rutte and his ilk, all those people that have pieces and his ilk, pieces and his ilk, but Rukhanatu, hmm. Rukhanatu, let, let me be honest about that. All them man, them who, who, who came up with an old playbook, and with bullshit and with I I need to have a zero sum of if I have knowledge they are not supposed to. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that that goes by the wayside at some point. Some point, some place, that fuck goes. That fuck dies. And in it dying, maybe we got a chance. Maybe we got a chance to figure it the fuck out. Maybe we got a chance to not you know, look at our brother and our sister as other, but yo, we're all in the same fucking boat. And yo, dread, yours is mine, mine is yours. Not not necessarily communism, but a little bit of compassion and a little bit of, uh, you gotta eat, I gotta eat. You gotta learn, I gotta learn. We gotta defend each other, we gotta try to help each other and not just be mad all the time. Get some pussy, you know, laugh a bit, drink a drink, and learn and grow and move. And we might get there. Yeah, here we go. Come. Knock no, all the holes in no, it. Come. No, 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 no holes, no holes. But I'm just thinking, but what are you thinking is the outcome of this specific conflict going to be? This one? 
Ukraine. No matter what, China comes out stronger. Yeah, okay. No matter what. If like if you want to talk geopolitics, you got to take every aspect into the consideration. China, no matter what the fuck happens, good, bad, or ugly, because Russia might have to take licks on this one to mm. be able to save face. And in that, they're only going to have one trading partner that really is going to want to fuck with them. Because out of all of this, out of moralistic standing, the rest of the Western world is done with Russia. I don't point. know. Morals are... Morals are malleable. Morals are malleable we, we with like time. To, we like to pretend time. that morals are strong. We have conviction. But morals... Are malleable, but here's the problem. It, uh, all right. When Germany for the is going to need gas years, again, let's see how, how for strong the next, their conviction is. For the next five years, Russia fuck. Good, bad, or ugly. Even if they win this thing, for the next five years, Russia fuck. Russia cannot do business with anybody else because of the fact, mm-hmm. like, let's call it four years. Let's call it an, an election cycle. Nederland, Rutte cannot jump up and say, yeah, we have a new pipeline. Germany cannot jump up and say, yeah, we have a new pipeline and it's coming from Russia. And especially for the internet slews that you got out there, for the journalism that they, they have, it, even if it's for sensationalism. But people know where, where the fuck is coming from. People know where the fuck is being sourced from. And if they know that, they know, yo, if you support that, I don't support you because you spun me the story. You spun me the narrative of brave little Ukraine against big bad Russia and all this was bad and now all of a sudden you change your fucking narrative. That means you change. So yes, they could do it. They could fucking put it I in say- play. Hashtag Corona. Yeah, no, but no, but all right. narrative keeps changing all the time. Right, but I still, but Corona is indiscriminate and is nebulous. You know what a man with a gun look like. You know what a man with a gun like, and and not even look like. Eighty years of fucking propaganda of Russian bad guys. Every fucking Die Hard movie and everything else was a Russian bad guy. Stop it, man. We we have the propaganda. Russia fuck. Russia is fucked. Russia is fucked for the next five years. I'm I'm willing to bet in a big way, in a small way, however the fuck you want to play it. What are you gonna bet? I am I am going to bet that I'm I'm willing to put money on the table that at the very least, financially speaking, they are not gonna they might ease up so that the place could get bread but they're not gonna give them space to earn anymore but like like swift and all that shit is gonna be under high scrutiny everything is gonna be under high scrutiny and you can't go to bitcoin to get this fucking thing done sorry geo you can't go to bitcoin to get this fucking thing done like either congrats on your nft to stunt congrats on your nft but yeah you know yeah okay mar how about the united states is gonna assassinate putin Putin leaves, can Russia then be redeemed within no. the period of the five years or four years, whatever you are foreseeing? Look, if Putin decides to step down for whatever fucking reason... Putin is not going to decide to step down. He's not. He's not. But he's if he does... He's going to be assassinated by the CIA. That is... what You know, that's what I'm thinking, but that's what I'm not thinking as well. I'm thinking that, that his own... like. His own oligarchs are, are like China's gonna put a is gonna put a fucking oligarchs Conok. <laughs> China is gonna put a fucking bullet in this man if he's not careful, man. Like oh. I, I think that he's at the end of his rope. I think he's desperate. I think that he's trying to preserve a legacy or really I think he I think he's an ideologue. I really think that he's an ideologue. I really think that he believes in a particular thing and he believes in it so strong to the detriment of everything else. Hmm. And for me, I Putin is half the problem. Putin is half the problem. But you all the oligarchs around him, which is the other key to this whole thing, are too comfortable with what's been going on. They've made a lot of money with him. Mm-hmm. A lot of money. A lot of money. Money buys you influence, influence buys you power. And But now they're losing a lot of money because of him. And that's where things have started to break up. I think that those interests do not align like anymore. I think I think that there's a path to them doing what they want to do as well. 
and they might in they might install oh man like what was his name um the guy that became president when put became the prime minister what was the fuck his name like this like black haired like young dude or whatever the fuck but yeah but there's like but he was a puppet he was Putin's puppet. So if he was his puppet, why not can I why can't he be our puppet? You know what I mean? And I'm thinking that that's where this thing goes. I, I'm thinking that capitalism returns to Russia again in some way, shape, or form because you will have a moment of a come like you'll have a come to Jesus moment. But you say capitalism will return to Russia again. I don't think capitalism ever left. I don't think it's leaving. I don't think I don't think it's le- it left. Yeah, depending on who they talk to. Capitalism in its purest form is, has has never been to Russia. You've always had oligarch. You've always had monopoly. You've always had um, capitalism. Maar zijn dat geen onderdelen van het are those not segments of capitalism? Capitalism done right. Capitalism done right. Capitalism as a fever dream of a Republican. A uh, free market Yahoo in the states is unfettered as fuck. It is no regulation. It is, it is, it is truly a chance for the little guy to win, because the little guy could come with it with the next new idea, and the older guy is too slow to adapt. Mm. But it is also the people understanding what's going on. You need for capitalism. This is this is the weird part. Capitalism and democracy, for all the propaganda that we've been fed in our years, and that seems to be a word that comes up a lot, but for all the shit that we've been fed like over the years, they don't, while they overlap, they don't go hand in hand. Democracy is democracy, capitalism is capitalism. Mm -hmm. There's a Ving diagram where they overlap a lot. Like there's freedom in both sides. There's things that you like. But the same you can say for socialism and and democracy correct also in a Venn diagram overlap correct a lot, correct so. correct is right right and that's why democracy as a stelsel lends itself to both you check mm-hmm. but here's where it gets interesting like in a true capitalism and not a dirty capitalism the big guy technically does not play dirty with the little guy my okay, well, doesn't hold, play hold hold your thoughts right I wonder if capital true capitalism can be clean because you say in true capitalism not play dirty. I think capitalism is dirty. Because uh, there's yeah. always this element of exploitation. You need uh, the big honcho yeah, that controls the but the, 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 here's the, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, like, and 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 you'll forgive me for this particular anecdote, right? I hated the idea of my baby mama in high school. I was the nerd, and from how she tell told me, she was a popular kid. You know what I mean? Like she was the cheerleader and all that shit, right? And in an intimate moment, you know, after making love, whatever the fuck, we're sitting down. And and so you know, like you know, like a question kind of kind of bubbled up in me. I'm like, how did how did that happen with you? Like because how did what happened with you? like popularity? Like okay. how, how did like how did you become? Because I'm I'm with her and I'm seeing behind the veil. Like I'm seeing like was like what her thoughts are and whatnot. And I'm like, but you're not a popular person on paper. Mm. How the fuck did that happen? Like I'm like I'm too I'm I'm too curious. And she. She she gave me game bigger than anything else I could ever expect. And she told me plain, look, it's not that I took power. People gave it to me. People gave me power. People gave me power over their lives, over their zeggenschap, over their... People looked to me for trends and for culture and for all that shit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making it more bigger, but she basically told me that. That is like, it's not what I took, it's what they gave me. In capitalism, it that is the that is the weird matrix of 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 when shit goes bad. It's not the head honchos have power; is we give it to them. If capitalism works, mm. if capitalism works properly, mm. the same speed with which somebody rises, they can fall. 
You can stop buying this shit. You can stop buying this shit. We can stop using Amazon to fucking I want to say, can we stop using internet? Yeah, we no, could. Can we stop using internet? We can stop. Can we stop using electricity? Electricity? No, but wait a minute. But wait a minute. But then, are those capitalist things or are those things that are supposed to be provided by the state? Okay. Like, no, but that's a whole other discussion. That's about, my point. That's a discussion about what you think human beings should have as a standard of living. Mm. At a certain point, mostly Western governments and governments who are based on or looking towards Western governments for their own organization um, said, you know, we need electricity. We cannot be commercial with electricity because it is a basic need of everybody. Everybody should be able to have electricity. Yes. So then it became... Like everybody need a fridge. So then it became a state, like the electricity companies became state uh, companies so that right. you could provide for everybody. Post then, office too, later, water. Later, you see post office, water, uh, some education, um, um, health. Medicare, depending, health, depending on health. where you're at. Yeah. There are pockets that we say, okay, no, that is that should be a right. Everybody should be able to afford it or get it. So the state will regulate it. But then you see capitalists rearing its ugly tail or head or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then they're going to privatize. They're going to privatize these things. <laughs> right. This, I mean... Um, no, but okay, but wait, but wait. But you want to give context, give context. Why were these things privatized? I, I, like, I, like at least around us. I think go- government want money, need money. No. Well, why? So we saw they need money, but why? Why the fuck do they need money? Because they want to drive in an air cooked car 24 uh, seven. Yeah. Look, d- well, yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but yeah, but no. Okay, right? boom. What is your take? No, look, look. It comes back down to priority, at least with me. It Like, it comes back down to priority. And for the past 120 years, as long, or like even longer, as long as colonialism has been alive, mm-hmm. We in the islands doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter black or white. I mean black too, but whoever lived on here had an idea of what success looks like, of what prosperity looks like, of mm-hmm. what you, you know. And prosperity was that zero sum game that you were talking about. You have to exploit somebody to be successful. It was never said. It was never you know like you know like we're 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 too civilized and genteel to do that. But ultimately, that's what you're doing. You want to pay. The iron lady, like a 50 gilder to go iron your clothes this fucking high, mm. you know, like every two weeks or whatever the fuck, right? The problem comes from the definitions that we've been having for so long. And in that, the priorities that we set, we have these things of, I want to be successful. I want to be comfortable. I want to be secure. But secure looks like an Audi. Secure looks like a big house. Secure looks like... You know, it doesn't look like a two bedroom house that you're happy with and your kids mm. and everybody's happy with like a gets or some shit like that. that. Does not look like success. And the weird fucking part is is that you tell our grandparents that if they're still alive, great grandparents that like are still alive, and they look at you with your TV, with your phone, with your kids, with the woman working, with all that shit, and they look at you like you're not happy. You're not good yet. You're not you're not ready to kind of level off and mm-hmm. be done with that. That was that ultimately has been the problem with capitalism. Is not capitalism as a like as a mechanism is a problem. It is just the priority that you put into it. It is the big word a KPI. Uh key uh oh Jesus. Um key something something like indicator. Like basically like it's like your metric for success. What does it look like? Every time is growth. Every fucking time. It's not like I have the company. It's every, everybody's being paid. We got sustainability. We got this thing. We're, we got market share. We're not going nowhere. All the indicators are we're here. Coca-Cola needs yet another piece of the pie. McDonald's yet needs yet another branch in Bumfuck. But that is capitalism. And no, that's a form of capitalism. I, I I genuinely think that there's a form of capitalism that is maybe not even given term to yet or But that's not capitalism. That's another system of organizing things. Are you a socialist? I'm nothing. And everything. <laughs> man, go fuck man. <laughs> Why are you? What the fuck? 
shit. The Why are you screaming stuff? about man? No, because I was expecting a good answer from you. No, but listen. Like, not like a dodging answer. I was expecting a good answer no. from you, man. <laughs> no, Mark. Man, go fuck yourself, yeah, man. Listen, I, the, of course, we grew up in a society of capitalism, so it's very hard to think Other. outside of capitalism. Yeah. And then you have ideas of socialism, and then you see uh, some kind of achtig, like ideals. Like they tried some kind of form of socialism, but it wasn't correct. They tried it in Russia. They tried it in Cuba. They tried it in um, like a lot of countries um, around us as well. They tried some form, but it failed. They tried it in in, in the USSR. Um, I am for a. I I would like the system indeed, as you said, that it is gewoon. Um, you don't need to grow. You, you don't need to to grow all the time. Yeah. Just provide for Sustain. everybody. For everybody, sustainability Sustain, is a big word. Yeah, yeah whatever. That, that's a big you know, word. That's provide a big word. what you need and use what you need. Don't go and be greedy and do all kind of shit. No. Yeah. Like, bro, you you can make money because that that is now how we've um, ordered our world. I I agree, and you know, but it. We should look more at sustainability. We should m- look more at what do we need for a balanced life. And you don't need more, 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 more. And I think the system that we are are we have been taught the narrative that it needs to be a stijgende line, like yeah. a line that that grows or that goes up. I think yeah. why can it not be a circle? Right. Why should it grow? Why can it not or be a? Why can it not be a flat line? I'm a. I'm a. I'll give my last thought about all of this because it does tie back unfortunately and then i'll give you you know the space to 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 knock it out the park i i genuinely think that like one of the things that like i can't i can't remember where the fuck i read it but i read something that said kind of like the the equivalent of this we have in both of our hands as humanity, the ability to make heaven or hell, basically. Like we can destroy ourselves or we can build ourselves perpetually, right? Mm-hmm. What we lack is is like the cultural maturity to understand and to do the thing. We have all the tools. We have the tools to end hunger. We have the tools to end not necessarily end disease, but we can get ahead of every fucking thing. Mm-hmm. We can have, we can we can make happy, healthy human beings across the board, and we can you know just go towards the future like Star Trek, you know. But we 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 lack the maturity to be able to do those things, and in the maturity, we have the ability to kill ourselves. That that is the problem. That is ultimately the problem. You, you and I talk about you want kumbaya. I, I, I want kumbaya after a fashion. You know, I literally complained to my wife here this week. Why can't we all just be naked, eat mangoes, and not fuck with each other too much? You know what I mean? Like just or just fuck with each other. Too basically, much. right? But all of that, like, why can't we do that? And it, like, it comes down to all of the little psychological things, the sociological things we put on each other and on and on ourselves. I think, I genuinely think that that hebrechheit, that that the greed, that greed mm-hmm. comes from a place generationally, maybe you know, historically, from like we we're only now in the last again hundred, hundred and fifty years through the industrial revolution and all of that we have abundance but our brains our dna our culture inertia whatever you want to call it and is not catching up to the fact that we've won we've won we've won all the shit we can look into the middle of a black hole right now man Mm. whereas 200 years ago 300 years ago they couldn't even figure out to get to the fucking moon couldn't even get out to figure out to get into the sky we have the shit we have everything that we want we could ever need but we're not ready for that yet mm-hmm. we've we've we we haven't been ready and we've been rushing in one way but we've been retarded in the other pardon 
yeah, pardon the word, y'all. Yeah. You know? I genuinely think that that is the problem with humanity. I, I genuinely think that that's the problem with all of us. We, we know what we know what we got to do. There's science behind every fucking thing. We can look at something. We could say something. We could, do, but our hearts are not in it. Our hearts, our minds, we're not ready for it. We're not ready for all what has to come, all the beauty that has to come with it. And we would rather be miserable in our little holes. And point fingers and blame and do all the monkey fuck than to just be, you know what, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Maybe I need to look at you a little more. Maybe we need to give each other space a little more. All that shit. Mm. But we're not there yet. You know? And sorry for being depressing, folks, but yeah, that that's generally how I feel. We're not there yet. Well, let me have a shot for the last you know, <laughs> close the shit off, man. You, yeah. you, you might as well drink. You totally depressed me, Marlo. Mm. Yeah, we're talking shot mm. That's okay. That's okay. That's that's right there, look. No, look, but I no, but 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 hey, if I really thought that this shit was hopeless, I wouldn't be here having this conversation with you. If, if maybe I, you're having this conversation with me because I give hope. I've Fine, been known fuck to it, give hope. fuck it. I'm gonna go with that. People, Denise the Hope bringer, Marlo the fucking cynic. Hey, Yo, thank you. Yeah, 2022 I'm, roles have reversed. Roles have reversed. I'm loving this year. Ooh, all right. Mm, so far, at least, because again, mad men and weird people doing weird shit all over the world. But I'm still hopeful and can lie to you, man. Still enjoy the beach. Like I still enjoy. You know, like fucking around with you and 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 having a drink and a conversation with good friends and whatnot. So like, screw it. Yeah, I just think final thoughts, final word. I think we're very blessed. We here sitting right here right now in this country in in this part of the world. So uh, with all the challenges, with all the shit that is going on, I think we are very blessed. Mm. And you know, mm. I'm counting my blessings and uh, yeah, and say salute to blessings and being blessed amen hey guys mm. that was a shot of black that was that was from the how do they come jesus christ um no but guys um thank you for spending time with us again and and and, and obviously we went all over the world where where this one was concerned we do hope look i i'll say it plain i stand with ukraine but not out of any kind of nationalistic sense is just that seems to be where the little guy is. And I'm always going to stand with the little guy. Let them get through this. I'm hoping cooler heads prevail. I'm hoping no bullshit happens like how I'm thinking of. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely hoping that I'm wrong. But in the meantime, yo, just for, for, at least with me, y'all be kind to each other. Be be a little bit mindful don't do no bullshit. Don't be a bully. Don't be all that monkey fuck. All that woke shit that people warn you about. It is true. Don't do no dumbness. You know what I mean? And for us... Dumbness is relative, but okay. Yeah. No, but for us and for everybody here, I think that we just want to see the world just do well. And we just want to get through this bullshit without too much drama, too much having to worry, too much whatever. And too much hurt because, again, we didn't get into it too much, but we are going to hurt down here. We are going to hurt in, if not Curacao, St. Martin, if not St. Martin, St. Croix, if not St. Croix State, somebody's going to feel this shit. And it's usually at the bottom. It's not at the top. And we are in paradise, but we are at the bottom of the fucking totem pole. So let's try to get get through this as best as we can. Speak to your politicians if you want to. Do whatever you, that you can to make your voice heard. And Ukraine, I hope you guys get through this shit as well as we, like as anybody can. Yeah. D, thank you for having this here with us again this evening. I don't know if you have any words on top of that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You said you're always for the little guy. I'm not by default for the little guy. Usually, yes, but I am. You know, I hate the phrase thoughts and prayers because what the fuck. Yeah. Mar, I do send good vibes and um for everybody that's been affected hope by by the war and hope. I know we're only in the beginning stages so I'm 
I'm worrying. I freeze. I I I am. I'm afraid that it will only get worse. Yeah. But I hope. Um. You know, it's over soon. I hope that. You know, like. You hope the dick measuring contest is done and there's actually rational yeah. people behind the fucking wheel. Whatever, rational or not rational, stop this shit, man. Stop, stop this fucking shit. Stop your monkey. Fuck y'all. Yeah, man. God damn, Putin. Listen to us at least. You know. And then, and and like what Marlo says, and he says it time and time again. You know, just be kind. I mean, it's it's a lesson for myself. I mean, I'll try to be kind. You know, for this, for this, for this month, for this year. <laughs> let's not put the the goal too high. But no, <laughs> y'all, just just be kind and have some compassion. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah man. Hey. Signing he, off, man. Signing off. It was fun. So, Guys, good night. To hope. To hope and good night, you you motherfuckers. <laughs> Peace. In the Middle East, Ukraine, and Russia. Amen.